You know those glamorous, jewel-like fruit tarts you see in the windows of French bakeries? Well, they're deceptively easy to make. It's just a matter of putting together a few simple building blocks. A pat sucre dough, a rich almond French pen filling, a light vanilla pastry cream, and the fresh fruit topping. In this episode, I'll show you how to make a beautiful fruit tart from one of my favorite pastry chefs, Francois Payard. I'll give you tips on each component and show you how to put them all together for an impressive tart that is as delicious as it is gorgeous. The base of our French fruit tart is a tart shell made of a pat sucre dough. In an earlier episode, we talked all about pat sucre and how it's different from a classic pie dough. The dough for this tart is similar to the one we made for the lemon tart, but there are some notable differences. The first difference is we're gonna start with room temperature butter. Because we're not going for a flaky crust, we're looking to incorporate our butter and sugar as thoroughly as possible. Secondly, we're using confectioner sugar. Confectioner sugar has a little bit of cornstarch in it. This will help create a more crumbly, tender crust. I'm also gonna add a little salt and some vanilla. And I'll process this until it's nice and smooth and creamy. You can stop and check and maybe even scrape down the sides if you need to. Let's see, yep, this looks great. Smooth, creamy, and well blended. Now another difference with this pat sucre is not only am I adding all-purpose flour, but I'm also gonna add some cake flour. Cake flour has a lower protein content, so it will make the crust more crumbly and tender. And we'll process just until the flour is incorporated. This is a very soft dough, so don't be surprised. And here's the last difference. Instead of adding an egg yolk, I'm gonna add a whole egg. This will lend structure to the dough and process just until it's smooth and well blended. Because this was a double batch of dough, I've divided it in half. I like to use a scale for this to make sure that both halves are equal. As you can see, this dough is super soft so you really do need to use the plastic as your guide, otherwise it would be a sticky mess. Wrap them up, and I'm gonna pop them into the fridge for at least an hour until they're firm. So we're going to roll the dough until it's about an eighth of an inch thick. As you can see, I'm using parchment to roll out this dough. I definitely recommend it because this dough is very soft and can be a little tricky to work with. And now we'll prick the dough with the tines of a fork. If the dough starts to stick too much to the fork, dip the tines in a little bit of flour and continue. Now I'm gonna lightly dust the top with some flour and use an extra sheet of parchment paper to flip the dough over because we want the pricked side to be on the bottom. Carefully peel off the parchment and just like with our other pie crusts, I'm going to wrap the dough around the rolling pin Lift it up and unfurl it onto the tart pan. Don't worry if you get some cracks, we can piece this dough together. Gently lifting, pressing into the bottom corners. See, we have a crack here. That's okay, we'll just press that together. You can pinch off the excess dough at the top, or if you'd like, you can fold over the excess and press it into the tart pan to reinforce the sides. I'm gonna use a rolling pin to cut off any excess and level the top of the tart. If you prefer, you can use a paring knife to do this as well. And now we'll let this chill while we make the frangipan. Frangipan is a very rich almond paste made with plenty of butter and eggs. Besides adding another delicious layer of flavor to the tart, it has a functional role as well. When you pipe it into the unbaked crust and baked the two of them together, it creates a barrier that will prevent the crust from getting soggy from the pastry cream and fresh fruit. To make the frangipan, use a stand mixer fitted with a paddle attachment, add your soft butter, and beat that until it's light and fluffy. And now we're gonna add granulated sugar and continue beating, again, until it's light and fluffy. You can stop and scrape down the sides a few times during mixing as well. Now we'll add egg yolks. Make sure we get them all in there. 
There we go. All-purpose flour and finely ground almonds and mix it until it's really well blended. Now I'll spoon the frangipan into a pastry bag. Notice how light and fluffy it is? This is just the way you want it. We'll twist our bag. And we have our chilled pie crust, unbaked. And to get our frangipan into the tart shell, I think it's easiest to pipe it in. This way, we get a nice, even layer. You can also use an offset spatula. That would work just fine, too. Don't worry if you need to stop and twist the bag down again. We'll fill in any gaps once we're done. This isn't for show. It's just a functional way of doing this. Now with this little bit that I have left, I'm just going to go around, fill in some of my gaps, making sure to use every bit of this delicious frangipan. And once it's in, use an offset spatula to just smooth out the ridges. So now you're ready to bake the crust and the frangipan together. You're looking for a really nice browned color on your crust because you won't be baking it anymore after this. If the crust is underbaked, the flavor will be bland and pasty. While my crust is cooling, I'm gonna go ahead and make the pastry cream. A pastry cream is a vanilla custard that's thickened with starch. In this case, I'm using all-purpose flour. As with any custard, the challenge is to not scramble the eggs. So I've whisked together my egg yolks, sugar, and flour until it's light in color and smooth. And I've heated my milk, and I'm going to slowly pour the milk into my egg yolk mixture while whisking constantly. This is where you'll prevent scrambling. Nice and slow, just a little bit at a time. Now that this is all together and smooth, I'm gonna set my pan just off the heat and pour the egg yolk mixture back into the hot milk, once again whisking constantly. Use a spatula to get all the ingredients into the hot milk. So I'm gonna cook the pastry cream over medium heat, whisking constantly until it thickens. And I'm going to make sure that I get my whisk into the corners. At the beginning of cooking, there's a lot of foam on the top of the custard. Once it starts to thicken, that foam, also called mousseline, will incorporate into the cream. And the cream is starting to thicken and boil. Once the cream boils, you can tip the pan on its side and you'll see the pastry cream actually peel off the bottom. That's when you know it's done. Slide it from the heat and scrape it into a clean bowl. And before we cover it, add a little vanilla extract. Let's stir that in. Scrape the sides of the bowl down and cover it with a piece of plastic wrap. Pressing the plastic wrap directly onto the surface, this will prevent a skin from forming on the surface of the pastry cream. And now we're gonna chill it. When the pastry cream is cool, I'm gonna whip up the whipped cream until it holds some soft peaks. And then I'll take off the cover from the pastry cream. And before I add the whipped cream, I'm just going to stir the pastry cream with a smidge of the whipped cream to lighten it and aerate it before I add in the whipped cream. And using a spatula, I'll just fold this gently until it comes together and it forms a lightened pastry cream. Okay, now it's ready to go into the tart shell. If you want to, you can put the pastry cream into a pastry bag and pipe it in. I think it's just fine to spoon it into the center of the shell. And then I'll use an offset spatula to spread the cream in an even layer. Now comes the artistic part choosing the best fruit in the market and arranging it on top of your tart. Today, I'm gonna to use some strawberries, some blackberries, some delicious smelling apricots, and I'm just gonna arrange it on top of the tart, being very casual about it. It's fun to have pointy edges going all sorts of different directions, and make sure to alternate your fruit colors so you get a nice assortment of colors. And I like to take a tip from Francois Payard, 
and add a few fanned out thinly sliced apple slices as a final fruit garnish. Fan them out and stick them right in there. This just gives the tart a little more height and a really sophisticated feathery look. Once you have the fruit arranged just as you like it, there's one last step. Heat a little apple jelly over low heat until it's runny. Using a pastry brush, brush a little of the jelly over the fruit. This will keep your tart looking fresh and beautiful for several hours until you're ready to serve it.